ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I am super excited to introduce, to reintroduce, to to have the familial homecoming of one Mr. Stephen Shank, the man, the myth, the legend from Phone Arena. Welcome back to the Pocket Now Weekly Podcast. Thank you podcast. so much for having me. This is great. It's been too it's long. It's been too long. I mean, we've been bumping into each other yeah. at trade shows and stuff, but I've really been enjoying your work over at Phone Arena. I think you're doing those guys super proud. And uh, just that we can always point, you know, like, you know, that, that used to be my buddy over on the Pocket yeah. Now podcast. It's like, he's all grown up. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, it's been a huge adjustment doing this whole different type of content over there, but I'm loving it. It's great. Yeah, I mean, I think you took to video really well, man. I mean, I, I always enjoyed our time together on on this podcast, and uh, it, I'm, I'm really happy to see uh, you thriving over there and, and, and yeah, getting my face out there well you know it, it it's it's a it's kind of a head trip right you know like i'm i'm putting myself out there to tell a story and i need to know what story it is i'm trying to tell and it, i think that's kind of a sink or swim moment for a lot of content producers especially people who came more from editorial as writing to then shifting over into editorial as video and so it's why i've been so stoked especially for what we have to talk about today uh, this yeah. BlackBerry Key One, because I think you you guys produced. I, I mean, like I think all of our audience would know by now. There's an embargo that obviously lifted this morning as dozens of BlackBerry reviews, <laughs> the floodgates and videos open, yeah. were dumped onto the internet. Um, but I really enjoyed your guys' commentary at Phone Arena. I you know I think it's right up there, pretty close to our review. Uh, um. <laughs> yeah, see, I'm surprised everyone seems to have the same sentiments about this phone, because when we first heard about this, we got some looks mm -hmm. a few months ago, peaks at CES, saw more at MWC, totally. and everyone's like, okay, it's, you know, middle of the road, it's got a keyboard, but so what? But, but now that the reviews are out, I think more often than not, people are changing their tunes and like, this is actually a pretty solid little phone here to, to our surprise. I was really expecting, I'm, I'm glad you, 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 you kicked it off that way. I was really expecting a bit more pushback on this notion of nostalgia or retro, you know, rebooting a classic idea, just like we get cranky about mm. rebooting film series. Um, but really it kind of just seemed like, uh, there was a cranky article on nine to five Google, uh, David Ruddock seems to be anti hardware mm -hmm. keyboard. And I'm not terribly surprised by that over at Android police, but on the whole, yeah, I I'm kind of with you. I think this phone is one of those devices that doesn't give off maybe the most impressive first impressions. Uh, but it's definitely one that I think benefits from a little extra time in using it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and you know, hardware keyboards are interesting. I first, when I got my first smartphone, it was a Motorola OG Droid, nice. you know, the slider, yeah. Uh, yeah, landscape orientation keyboard. And I thought, coming from, you know, a very hardware keyboard PC world, I'm going to need a phone. If I'm going to type on this right. phone, and I do want to, I'm going to need some way to feel like I'm actually inputting text in, in a way that's you know, tactile and familiar to me. And it didn't actually work that way, right? Uh, because you know the the using the thumbs and tiny little clicks rather than key travel, it's not the same experience as a keyboard. And so then I was in this kind of like middle ground for a while, waiting for software keyboards to catch up. And now that they have, I thought I was a software man forever. Right. But this key one, I think, it has me reconsidering things. Well, and and I think it's it's important to point. I uh, you know one of the one of the things I really enjoyed in the commentary from your videos is also just this notion that. It's okay for a phone to have a specific target demographic or have a specific audience in mind. And to to maybe not be the best all-rounder, I, I think we can both agree, maybe this isn't the best multimedia device. Um, surprisingly oh, good camera, not. but it's not really the kind of phone I want to sit and watch a movie on or play a bunch of games on or anything like that. But to then focus in on the aspects of mobile communications, on getting to done, on... Uh, productivity, and really giving a compelling reason as to why it's a good solution for that is actually kind of fresh in in a in a in an era where I think so many manufacturers are trying to copy general all rounder success. You know, iPhones and Galaxies. Um, I, I think that's opening up pockets of uh, these little pockets where a niche success could actually you know if you can corner the niche area like productivity, then that is actually a way for your company to stand out from the rest of the pack. 
Yeah, more than just productivity, though, you talk about finding an audience for a device. I think Gizmodo had a really interesting take on this, calling it, I think, the perfect phone for Kim Kardashian. No. <laughs> and they're not wrong here. If you're really into social media, if you're, you're texting a lot, you're writing I, short messages, like and the camera, the, you have this great combination Okay, there. so yes, absolutely with the rear camera. And and I, you know, I think what's funny is, is, like, would Kim Kardashian benefit more from having a really killer rear camera or from having a better selfie camera that has all oh, the beauty filter, question. blurring skin, mannequin, Odo <laughs> modes. Like, I need to distort my face so that no one can see that I'm actually a human being who's lived on the earth for a significant, you know, a portion of time. You just smear some Vaseline on the lens. That's the trick. <laughs> I it's like, again, it's such a small lens. I mean, that's that's a really it's mm. an accurate lens smearing. I think you'd have to pull off there. So I, I with, while I really absolutely want people to to check out individual reviews to see the different counterpoints on it, Jaime covered the main review for our channel. I I was tasked with getting some of the techie stuff out of the way, like the camera review. And tomorrow we're going to mm. be publishing our audio review. Um, I wanted to get your take. Um, sort of summed up in a nutshell for people like I want them to go see your review but if you could share some of your experiences in using this phone because I think it is it's an experience worth talking about with a little nuance because it's not like every single phone that's going to be released this year no it's a phone that you know going into I'd expect this to expect it to be a one-trick pony it has a keyboard and you're buying this because you want a phone that has a keyboard and nothing else does but there are a handful of areas where it really excels, and these aren't probably the ones most people, when they think about a, a really high-profile flagship phone, look to. It doesn't have a, a giant high-res screen. It doesn't have the fastest performance out there. In fact, it wouldn't even be the fastest performance if this came out a year ago. But <laughs> it's got that keyboard. Right. The camera is, is decent. This is, as a lot of people have noted, the same, uh, the rear camera, the same sensor that Google used or HTC used for the Pixel. The software processing is nowhere near as impressive as the Pixel does, but still, it's starting from a really, really strong place. Um, but we haven't mentioned this yet. If there's one thing this phone, one standout reason to get this, it's the battery yeah. life. Oh my god. Uh, I got north of 12 hours, like nearly 13, with the screen on right. the entire time. And this is easily a device you can charge once and then use it all weekend, and if you're not going crazy, and think about the things that consume a lot of battery life, uh, media consumption yeah. and gaming, which you're probably not going to be doing a lot of with this phone, so kind of the use cases filter into um, with this great hardware, the combination of the 625 Snapdragon chip and that 3500 milliamp hour battery, totally. this is like the perfect storm for insane battery life. Yeah, because I mean, I uh, I spent your your scenario there, spending a weekend with it, my, my very first weekend uh, charging the phone up, actually getting all of my stuff over uh, all of my accounts signed in. And I have a ton of screen off usage. It's why I typically don't uh, really publicize screen on times in my reviews is because mm. driving around in Southern California, I l use my phones a lot with the screen off. They're connected to my car computer. They're connected to my in-dash uh, audio, uh, the, the in-dash entertainment system, connected to a smartwatch. I mean, they're constantly pumping information around. I just don't have the screen right, on. Right, right. And so uh, from pulling the phone off the charger on Saturday morning at around 8 a.m., I did not get a low battery warning um, until 60 hours of use later. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds just about right. That's insane. And so I, I can completely appreciate where people are looking to their phones as, as you know, like sort of a total package idea. And they want to have this mm. notion of they, they want to be fulfilled. Like, I have the best. You know, like a Samsung or an Apple, I think, can really sell this notion of it's the best, even if we rationally know, like, not every feature is actually the best on this phone. Um, while while we can point to some of the deficiencies in something like high, uh, I, you know, uh, graphics intensive gaming, um, I did not feel like I was really sacrificing much for my normal running gun got to communicate, I'm plugged into social media, you know, 20 hours a day, I'm shooting a lot of content from the camera, and I'm listening to podcasts almost the entire time I've got the phone in my pocket. And this phone never really seemed to miss a beat. It didn't really seem to uh, hold me up at all. No, the only bottlenecks I ever saw, occasionally some issues with um, web browsing, a little stuttering Definitely, while yeah. scrolling. Um, 
And I hit a few RAM problems where multitasking apps, you could see them reloading into memory rather than popping right up. Oh, certainly. The three gigabytes of RAM uh, is a situation I would have liked to see. That's the one spec I think I would change. 32 gigs of storage, eh, it's, it's fine for what this is. Mm-hmm. And again, the 625, I can live with the performance because that is what's responsible for this battery life here. Totally. And so I would not trade that for a thing. And, and I completely more agree with you on, on some of the multitasking aspects. Like back, BlackBerry is so far removed from this market that we've, I, I, I don't know about you, but I've kind of stopped trying to organize my communication in the way that BlackBerry used to back in the day. So mm. for, I, I think their solution, and I don't think they're wrong. I just think they're, you know, it, it's something that people need to retrain themselves is the notion of the hub. So I think the hub is yeah. really smart so that you don't have to run up into that RAM limit. But that's not really how I organize my thoughts and my communications anymore. And it's tough getting back into this one window <laughs> where all of these like tweets and Facebook messages and emails and yeah. text messages. I'm are, glad you mentioned this. Yeah. I, I, I just don't think that way anymore. So this was the first BlackBerry device I've ever used. Uh, so Hub was this new uh, experience to me, and I I couldn't I couldn't get into it. Uh, I you know I'm trained to get all of my notifications from the uh, the disparate apps that that provide right. these services, and having them all in one place, I can see the appeal of that. But I'm just getting two notifications for everything. I'm getting yeah. my Gmail and the Hub telling me the emails coming in. Uh, and I can see if you're in the ecosystem, why these are appealing. And BBM as well. If you're into it, cool. But if you're already an established user of, I don't know, WhatsApp or even just Google Voice or something, it, it's tricky to find a reason to switch over. Um, so so this phone, but the great thing is you don't have to buy this for all the BlackBerry software. And I think that was what people were worried about when we yeah. saw BlackBerry becoming an Android-based platform. They're going to sell this on the value add. And for me, there's not a ton of value to the BlackBerry-specific software things. Mm -mm. The DTEK security, that's cool. I like how it gives a nice visual indication, an easy, like, overview of your phone security. It doesn't really appeal to me, but I can see the users who it does appeal to. Yeah, I'm I'm, Uh, I'm in that that ballpark. I want my Star Trek readout, you know, shield strength at at 70%, you know? (laughs) But that's not going to be a main selling point for any. No, and that's that. great because security is a really complicated thing, and making it simple for someone to just get a you know uh, bird's eye view of the situation that has some appeal. Um, but it was really the, the way that the phone's hardware interacts with the software that I love. That uh, the capacitive scrolling with the yeah. uh, the keyboard. That's okay. It, it doesn't. It isn't as smooth as I would like it to be. I had some issues with uh, speed control. It doesn't feel, it doesn't mm-hmm. respond the same way as scrolling on the screen does. But some tweaking there, and it would be, it would be perfect. I think. Now, have you, have you? Uh, so one of the frustrating things about the way that we're always sort of ahead of the curve whenever we have to play with embargoes is, it, it like the night before all of these reviews were set oh, to go yeah. live. Did you get the update? Did you, did you? I, run know, I checked, I checked yesterday afternoon, and it wasn't available then. Let okay, so now. I just got it this morning. So I, uh, I checked last night and nothing had come in. I just got it this morning. And and I think it has helped some of those little multitasking teething pains. But I question, you know, if you're a company like, you know, uh, Alcatel, not Alcatel, TCL, and you're working with BlackBerry on this and you've got this embargo and all of these videos are, are primed to go live the next day. Yeah, why would you <laughs> release this then? Right? Because because now it's like uh. it, it one we already have that conversation like this is up to date on it on the Android operating system it's got the most recent security patch we're looking good for software support yeah, I don't have the update it's not even out for me yet. and and I'm happy that they're being so proactive about pushing out uh, patches and bug fixes and things like that but if you really did just improve performance you're gonna have dozens of videos going live that aren't going to take advantage of this this performance update yeah. which consumers will get when they set up the device once it's available to, to, to buy. But consumers are going to look at some of these videos and hear some of these criticisms of like, oh, sometimes the performance is a bit stuttery. And then they're like, oh, well, I don't yeah. want that. When it possibly is fixed now. Just- but, you know, yeah, I mean, this, this is all very true. But I can't help just looking at the situation now. Wonder if TCL kind of had a feeling that things would play out as they did. That people are going to use the device for a while. They're going to appreciate the hardware keyboard probably a lot more than they thought they would. They're going to love the battery life. And the raw performance 
isn't going to matter so much. And maybe they had a little bit of insight there, like, okay, yeah, we'll have this last minute update that'll tweak the performance, but performance isn't going to be the biggest selling point of this phone to begin with. So it might not matter that much. It it is. I, I think it is definitely telling in this day and age where we're not. You know, the the idea of a big phablety phone with a huge battery that gets reasonably good runtime um, that for for all of the visual um, characteristics of this hardware keyboard, that it really does seem to be battery life, which has run away with the discussion as to the positives of this phone. Um, I really enjoy this keyboard. And, and to your point, I think one of the most interesting things about the keyboard is actually in the camera app. Um, did you try sliding across the uh, the keyboard after focusing? Oh no, no. So I was it, using the uh, the space bar shutter. Control okay, yeah. So nice. so I think that's kind of cool, especially because you don't have to reach your thumb around the keyboard yeah, to get yeah, to the yeah. shutter. Um, but when you focus and then you slide on the keyboard, it's this super accurate fine level of exposure compensation Mm. so you focus and then you're like oh i want the photo to be just a little bit brighter and you just scooch up on the keyboard just that little bit and you can control the brightness um really easily and so that to me was a perfect example of a company that's uh, doing a good job of actually utilizing their hardware as opposed to sort of uh apologizing for it you know like i look at the galaxy s8's uh, screen aspect ratio and Samsung hasn't done anything to really maximize the extra real estate you know and the camera app is just a sea of wasted space um, you, the the best solution they've come up with is you can crop into your apps which cuts off controls in the corners we haven't really seen anything use that real estate outside of the browser so for Blackberry they've got a problem where ergonomically it's this clumsy reach around the keyboard or hey you know what we can actually just use the keyboard for a bunch of controls and that actually frees up the display for all of this stuff that we would normally have to put extra icons or shutter buttons or sliders or rocker switches yeah, and, in and, there you know more than that i think it helps overcome a a flaw with just touchscreen interfaces in general that we've sort of been living with but hasn't been great is that sliders are horrible to work with <laughs> if you ever try to set like the brightness slider on android phone with any kind of precision it is <laughs> maddening because right. you cannot That's see terrible. where the slider is when your yeah. finger is on top of it so if you're trying to get like pixel accurate placement you cannot do it so having the control the input separate from the feedback on that input is it's a fantastic development Oh, totally. I, every time I run like a battery test, I have to set the screen brightness to a specific yes. value. Yes. Oh, my God. And most phones can't get there. <laughs> most phones, yeah. it's like, I, I'm going to move it just a little bit. Oh, man, I just threw it 30 nits off. <laughs> I spent like 20 minutes last night trying this with the Huawei P10 Plus. And oh, it just gets it's exercise so and frustration. And how, oh, man, no, seriously, like the slider on the P10 Plus has like this hard split where it's like, like oh yeah 30%, it's not 30%, a linear 30%, no 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 80 percent, and you're like no yeah. i want to set it to half how can i set this to half brightness it's so frustrating um but i was pleasantly surprised to see i mean uh, you kind of get back to some of the discussion you were saying yeah. about the software here um no I, I completely agree that the hands-off approach largely rolling with a stock interface with a couple little minor additions. It's a very Motorola aesthetic to how yeah, you like, customize true. a design. Um, I, I think that this has really played into the conversation of whiz-bang versus core usage. And and I wonder, what what do you think that we can get across to consumers that this is a viable option, even if it's not the sexiest? Or do you think that the market has already you know, sort of bifurcated between the Samsung Apple discussion that some this might be the perfect phone for someone, but you know what, they feel safer going with an with an iPhone. Um, Do you think that this has the potential to start chipping away at that duality mindset? You know, of any BlackBerry phone in recent history, I think this is the one to do that. Uh, Whether or not it succeeds is going to depend a lot on how the marketing works. Uh, And I know that uh, TCL's talked about getting some carriers involved. I know Sprint's been mentioned, and that's going to be key to to getting this into the hands of users. Also, BlackBerry has historically been the phone for, you know, businessmen. And uh, getting the right uh, connections to... uh, large companies who would deploy the phones to thousands of employees. That, I think, is going to be a much harder nut to crack because I feel like the ship has sailed there. They're not going to want to move backwards into uh, 
you know, into the, what, we, what they were doing in 2008. Uh, and <laughs> right. it's going to be a lot trickier. And I think the price is also, well, it could be a problem, and I'm not... If there's one thing I'm not sure about with how this phone mm-hmm. is released, is how people are going to respond to the pricing. I look at it, you know, I'm looking at the hardware and comparing this to phones like, a good recent example, the Moto G5 Plus. Right. Another uh, 625-based handset that costs so much less than this mm-hmm. and is a really, really good phone in its own right. Um, but you're not buying the BlackBerry Key 1 for the same reasons you would buy the G5 Plus. I mean, totally. yes, if the battery life appeals to you, you might consider both, but these are not going after the same users here. And... I wonder if the people who the key one might appeal to are going to be fine shelling out an extra $250. Wow, now they say it aloud to realize that's almost twice as much of the G5 Plus is going for. But right. you get you do get value for that money. Uh, I don't know if it's enough value, though, to draw in customers, especially when you can get something like a Galaxy S8 or an iPhone for just another couple hundred dollars more. Right, but I mean, like we we've seen psychologically that even that hundred dollar bump has this profound impact on what people value or what people perceive as value, right? Hmm. Um, so I, I I have to wonder. I, I'm with you there. I have to wonder: will the bang for buck conversation? It's one that you have to exercise nuance. Like if if we're looking against a, a Moto G5, I think the build quality on the BlackBerry is better. I think the oh, choice absolutely. of materials is better. I think the camera is better. The battery life is just a teeny bit better. Yeah, well, it's and, bigger, sure. Yeah. Well, yeah, but I mean, like, I mean, we were talking about like the the efficiency aspect, but they're both using right. the six twenty five I mean, yeah. and six twenty five. But you have yeah. bigger battery and smaller screen here, so exactly. Yeah. And so when you know, you start you have to start like check marking all of those differences. You know, it's the same problem I've had with the premium mid rangers last year, where just something because something has a Qualcomm A twenty doesn't mean that it's a flagship, right? Um, a, a phone is not just its processor. <laughs> <laughs> right, but, but look at the sum of all the, not just all the components, right. but how they come together and what the experience they deliver is. But it's tricky because we have, with the pricing here, the key one is a you know top-of-the-line mid-ranger, but then you look at the really, really affordable phones with flagship-level hardware from some yeah. of the other Chinese OEMs, and which do I go with, you have to ask yourself. And yet you are ultimately buying this, I think, for the keyboard. There's no two ways about it. Well, and and I think that there is... So and this this is why I, I you know like I have such a hard time I'm stuttering all over the place because my brain's trying to put three different ideas together all at the mm. same time and that's what's so difficult to express about a phone like the Key One is I think the the battery discussion is actually one of the most exciting things about this phone the keyboard is a nice nostalgic throwback and then I'm also super appreciative of the fact that this company seems to be way ahead of the curve on support and updates um, in, in a way that I've been very frustrated with some of the big league players like LG and Samsung, you know, waiting forever to get security patches and bug fixes to devices that are demonstrably more expensive than this BlackBerry. And so I want to be able to summarize all that. But at the same time, I also have to acknowledge that there's a $300 phone, which is going to perform very similarly. Mm-hmm. You just won't get the support you won't get the uniqueness of the keyboard you won't get the battery life and it's got a slightly nicer camera and and music sounds a little bit better out of the headphone jack like that's that's tough <laughs> you know like i i can already see all of my family and friends their eyes sort of glazing over as i try and explain that stuff when it's they hard want to like, get people excited a thumbs up, about thumbs this down. yeah yeah oh it really is uh, and and also i worry that maybe also the name Blackberry. I, 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 I'd be curious to hear your thoughts on this. Do you think that that's a name which can recover in terms of consumer mindshare? Or do we think that it's passe? Like if you were to pull oh, out oh, a no. Blackberry in a board meeting where this phone really belongs, would people look at that as being old fashioned? Or would they actually be interested in the fact that that seems to be a new Blackberry? Is this person a renegade? Or is this person really a, a go getter, sharpshooter, getting to done kind of fellow? Oh, yeah, there's, there's definitely, I think, going to be a prejudice against the the Blackberry brand and that, you know, much like if we're looking at, uh, you know, Windows Mobile and how Windows Phone never sort of <laughs> caught on, they missed right. the boat somewhere in the middle there to get into the, uh, totally. you know, the 2010s. Um, but I think that, that Blackberry has the advantage that there was never really a bad BlackBerry. Like, the company didn't 
crash and burn on some horrible phone. It just sort of never really gave us the really good phone we were looking for. So without any like very public failure like that, I think that it is possible with the right marketing and the big caveat there uh, to to get the public's perception realigned to say that you know BlackBerry we did great things a while back we're still doing great things now with yeah. a modern Android twist on it you're not going to get battery life like this with any of your other modern flagships and this phone will do everything that they <laughs> do maybe not in the same right. way or with as big a screen but you're not missing out on anything by going with this phone and you're going to get a lot too. So, again, this is going to come down to how they promote this and how they go after uh, today's and any of the smartphone users of today are not you, – people are shopping with different uh, concerns in mind than yeah, they were definitely. when BlackBerry was in its heyday. Uh, but if they go after that, then, yeah, I think there definitely is a chance for the phone to, and the brand to succeed. I want to see so, where this brings the BlackBerry brand, what our next big device is going to be. So, so what you're saying is that they should spend a lot of money on fun, playful uh, commercials of people dancing with the phones and you... not telling you anything <laughs> about the product or the services. I don't know if I'd go that far, but I think I would embrace like what we're saying about this, you know, being a good phone for social media and just yeah. on the go, you know, the gig economy, productivity. You might not have a set office, but you want some easy way to bang out emails. Great keyboard for doing that on the go. So... Uh, I think just modernizing the way you reach out to today's customers. This isn't the phone that, you know, is going to be in your suit breast pocket as you're in a you know, board meeting with everyone staring down at their laps, clicking away on their uh, their Blackberries. That's not the, I mean, I'm sure those yeah. users are still going to like this phone. That's not who Blackberry or TCL needs to reach out to now. Yeah, I, I think that part of the conversation, especially with so many bring your own devices policies going in at, uh, at different corporations, um, that's definitely, I think, going to be one of the most sensitive aspects of, of whether or not this phone succeeds. And also, I have to believe that their notion of success isn't necessarily like, oh, we're going to sell 10 million units in the next month, you know, like crazy sales numbers. Mm -hmm. But can this can this demonstrate to the public that this company is making a course correction? Because that becomes an underdog story also alongside you know the the lineage of support the the history of security uh, the reliability of these devices how they last a really long time blackberries are always renowned for their battery life their efficiency um all of those things i think are still in the fog of consciousness from people who are just a little bit you know, like maybe closer to my age or maybe we're into mobile electronics you know uh, a, a little while back but to chip away at what people are really valuing today. You know, if I see Joseph Gordon-Levitt drumming in a subway for BlackBerry, <laughs> um, I, I'm pretty sure this fight's been lost. Uh, you know, it's interesting you mentioned the, the age of users here, because um, you and I, we've used phones with hardware keyboards before, but I imagine there's a very large percentage of today's smartphone users who have never used a phone with a keyboard. This was not totally. on their radar when they started using smartphones. And I'm curious to see if there's any way to reach out to them and convince them that this is a viable option for text input. Uh, and I wonder if people would get this phone and just use the software keyboard and you know, lose half their screen real estate, which is a right. precious commodity to begin with in the process. Yeah, totally. But <laughs> I, I do wonder if this is a phone that's only going to appeal to like maybe people in their 30s on up. Will, uh, will teenagers, will people 20-somethings go after this device? You know, I, you see, and, and it, it, it's such a tricky concept because that's where I get you see, that's where I get most sensitive about branding and names, you know, the company behind this product um, and, and where there's, always, I think, always an opportunity to disrupt this market. But I wonder if the BlackBerry logo will be synonymous with what my parents used to use as opposed to this could be something, um, you know, sort of subverting what's traditionally popular in this market. And I, I like I handed the phone over to my wife and she was a die hard crackberry mm -hmm. user back in the day. Like when when she finally had to kind of give up on the Blackberry ecosystem, that was rough. And she was issued an iPhone for for her gig um, through work and she hates it. She she can't <laughs> stand it. She she's I mean she's sort of an Android user by default, but I hand her this phone and she's like, you know, she really likes the build quality, kind of reminds her of her old bold. She used to have a curve, too. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's kind of flipping it over and it's got Android. So she's familiar with Android. And then I handed her the case and it's got a big old Toomey logo on it. And she went, oh, 
that's a smart partnership. <laughs> like all of a sudden, you <laughs> know, from this like sort of nostalgic throwback, the company had done one thing very smart for her in appealing to a fashion lifestyle mm-hmm. luggage and bag brand. It wasn't that that changed her perception of the phone. It changed her perception of the company that they understood that that logo meant something to <laughs> business travelers, to uh, people who have to walk into board meetings are going to be judged the second they walk in the door <laughs> by the briefcase that they're carrying or the laptop bag that they've got. And that all of a sudden, BlackBerry had done something fresh of this time. It wasn't just a really nice BlackBerry case. They actually struck out a partnership with a company that's relevant in sort of the business fashion world today. And so I just thought that was such a unique moment. You know, like I'm I'm sitting here trying to do a battery benchmark and she's like, oh, to me. (laughs) (laughs) You're right. This is not something that I, you know, looking at this phone from, you know, specs from just my, uh, from the user experience standpoint, I I even forgot about the case. I it came with one. I didn't really give it a second look. It's not something right. I normally think about when evaluating phones. But clearly, there are people for whom this is a you know important consideration. It's the ecosystem yeah, totally. of accessories and and the quality of those and how they add to what you get out of the phone. That's not something that we always think to look at. Yeah. But you know, also talking about the the branding and. I was surprised, we mentioned earlier, or you were talking about the great audio quality with the headphone jack here. The headphones that came with this phone. Now, yeah. I didn't find the audio quality or the headphone quality itself to be super high. It's, I don't think it compares great to something like the, uh, you know, the AKG brand at once with the Galaxy S8. But that they had you know, different size tips, this is not something you always see. It tends yeah. to be a slightly higher end thing. It felt like a, like a really nice... Uh, addition to a phone that you know is otherwise sort of mid-rangey, but I really liked the prominent BlackBerry logo on the uh, on the ends of the earbuds. There, yep. this shows that like they could have just had just some glossy black generic looking earbuds in here, but they're really embracing the you know, BlackBerry logo, and I think it speaks strongly to the. Uh, the dedication to the brand here. This is, we want to get the BlackBerry face back out there, let people know we're not going away and that we can do more than just, and we're not just about typing away. I keep going back to like businessmen, but this is going to be a hard uh, image of the company that need to shake in order to modernize uh, their appeal and have associating it with media, with, you know, um, Apple with mobile devices, even before the iPhone really took off with, you would see the iPod. You didn't see the iPod. You saw the white earbuds. Exactly. And, and you got to know Apple, this is media, you made the connection here. Just having the BlackBerry logo out there with the earbuds, it's a little thing, but I think it goes towards showing where the company's priorities are. Oh, totally. I completely agree. And also, it's just kind of nice when a phone is sort of properly accessorized to use right out of the box. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't love, I actually, I really don't like the earbuds that come with Huawei phones, but you get, uh, you know, earbuds and a snap-on case. And you have them and there, cable yeah. And, and, and I mean, like, the, you open the box and, like, this phone is ready to use. Go out and live life. You don't even have to worry about buying a cover or case for it. And so that was a really happy experience to get from a BlackBerry as well. I'm right there with you. And I, and I think it's one of those things where visibility is going to be super important to, to see people using these things out in public. Um, it was one of the first times I was ever recognized in Los Angeles was the first night that I was shooting with the Key One camera. And someone came up to me to ask me about the phone because they saw I had a BlackBerry. And then they realized who I was, <laughs> <laughs> which was ridiculous on two fronts. <laughs> that, like someone was motivated to walk up to a stranger at 10 p.m. in <laughs> the San Fernando Valley while someone's pointing a camera at like a newsstand on a street corner mm-hmm. to ask about a phone. That actually motivated an interaction. And then, you know, again, just kind of silly, like, oh, oh, wait, I've seen you on YouTube. And you're like, oh, I do YouTube. It's cool. Um, but that, like, the phone was the star of this interaction with this total stranger. Um, <laughs> there's there's still, I think there is still sort of a mindfulness or an awareness there. But you're absolutely right. It can only be helped. And it's one of the things that bothered me a lot about the AKG branding exercise that Samsung just did is that those are Samsung earbuds yeah. and they're tuned by AKG. I, I had a Samsung rep properly correct me from my review of their earbuds where I was giving them a positive review, but apparently I wasn't giving them the right kind of positive <laughs> review. Um, 
that that bothers me because I'm a huge fan of AKG. They make some of my all time favorite studio recording gear. Oh, so you so felt that's a not misled. a label. Uh, you know, I mean, like we, we we're mutual friends of Mr. Mobile. Mr. Mobile took my microphone recommendation because I thought it would pair nicely with the dulcet tones of his narration. That's a thousand dollar AKG studio mic. It's one of my all time yeah, favorite serious business. St- studio microphones. I mean, we really wanted to capture something special in picking his mic. And so that label means something to me. If you slap that label on a pair of Samsung earbuds and you're not really disclosing the relationship between Harman, AKG, and Samsung, then I feel you're sort of you know, you're sort of misrepresenting what you're getting out of the box. To pop open a BlackBerry box and get a really respectable pair of earbuds, a really nice little microphone. I took a couple of phone calls from uh, from those earbuds, and the mm. mic seemed to perform really well. And they've got the BlackBerry logo on there. There's there's no confusion what you're getting here. We don't know who the partner is that maybe helped them design those earbuds, and it doesn't matter. They're BlackBerry earbuds for the BlackBerry phone that you just bought, and they're built to go together, and they do that job really well. You know, not to uh, change uh, gears here, but uh, I, while you mentioned Mr. Mobile, there's something I saw in his review that I mentioned as well when uh, mm-hmm. first getting hands-on with this phone. We haven't talked about the uh, the convenience key on the side here. This little uh, <laughs> shortcut button that lets you pull up right. an app or do some phone thing. How totally. do you feel about the placement here? Because to this day, I go to power the phone up or down, and I hit the convenience key instead of the power button. This button okay. is not where it should be. No, it's not. It's not. Um, so this has been a consistent problem that I've had with TCL and Alcatel is that they put their power button in the wrong place. Yeah. <laughs> the power button should never be on the upper left hand side of a phone. It's just that's what we'll never look for it there. Um, so it's completely wrong. I think on. Other devices like the Idle 4 and some of the DTEX, mm-hmm. uh, some of the BlackBerry DTEX, the idea of this convenience key is is a sound one. I wish that this were a camera shutter button instead on the key one because we also have a QWERTY keyboard that you can program every single key on it. So what convenience do I get from having yet another, another button? Yeah. On the side of the phone, this this is one of the few philosophical missteps that I think this phone makes is BlackBerry and Android together already means a significant amount of feature overlap in how you can customize the device between BlackBerry services and Google services. This This phone can be tailor fit to be precisely exactly what you want it to be down to exacting minutia. So giving us this one extra bit of hardware, which is woefully redundant, um, is just, I think, unnecessary. I, I think it complicates the phone. And I, and I think we're also in an age where a mass of consumers kind of want to be told how to use the phone. They're not necessarily looking to customize. Uh, yeah, the that's the problem. There's so much you can do with it. There's this yeah. you're over, uh, overwhelmed by choice. You know, the Android Authority guys had a great idea. Uh, they matched a Google Voice search with a convenience key. So it's kind of like a Bixby button. Oh, that's and smart. And just press that and do a, you know, a little voice search there. That's pretty convenient. That's smart. But also, you know, like, I can totally see... See, I want to try that now. I actually, like, would I, would I get a better benefit out of that? Because yeah. I, I can now also totally see the people in the comments on that video going, well, why not just use hot word voice detection and use your OK Google um, and have your phone recognize. If you're already doing a voice search, shouldn't it just respond to your voice for a voice search to initiate the voice search? And like, I can already hear the complaining people <laughs> on, on something like that because there's always someone, there's always more people ready to complain about an idea <laughs> than to like experiment with that idea. I, I you know, it, it, it's one of those things like, I know why they put it on there and I understand how it fits into the rest of the TCL aesthetic. Um, and that kind of goes double for now BlackBerry since BlackBerry hardware is made by TCL. But I, I don't use it. Um, it gets in the way. And you're absolutely right. It confuses my thumb where yeah. I have to spend time with other devices where that's exactly where a power button would be. Yes, on yes, a, it is. A number <laughs> of other phones. And, I, I you know, it's I, I, I just I don't have it set to do anything. It's not a thing that I use. 
you know, I, I can see the appeal, at least, uh, of having this and the uh, the keyboard uh, app shortcuts, where you can either long press or short press one of the, the letters on the keyboard to pull up an app. That, a whole lot of possibility in there. You probably don't even have enough apps on your phone to assign everything, but how mm. do you remember what does what? And you can make some mnemonic devices, and you know, B for your browser, that makes <laughs> sense. Eventually, you're going to run out of those, and there's an appeal to having just one button that you know what it does, but then again, it's up to you to form that association, to choose what you want it totally. to do. And I, you know, for several days, I'm playing around with what's the best thing to tie this to. I want it to do Twitter or Snapchat. What, what, do I, what am I going to get the most value out of? And there, I don't know if there's a clear answer to that. Yeah, I, and this also kind of just goes back to, I think, your, your comments and your review. Muscle memory is really important. And I think it's something that a lot of us maybe don't comment on as often as we should. I think so many reviews and user experiences where someone says that this isn't intuitive or this didn't work right are really confusing familiarity with a novel mm, experience. Right, I'm just expecting design. something else. But exactly. that's because Once of you have that my exposure, not necessarily what this device did, yeah. Right, and so when you were when you were talking about in your review, you know, like, Using the hardware keyboard is 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 foreign. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> like it doesn't feel not right. We do a lot of none of the skills you've developed, either with you know hitting individual keys or especially if you're used to any sort of gesture typing, does not translate over to this. And it's odd no. to not only be uh, you know hitting away on the keys with your two thumbs, but then swiping upwards to yeah. uh, for the prediction. It's 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 a whole new. I guess it's a whole new set of muscle memory you have to pick up. But it didn't really take me that long before I felt like I wasn't making a million mistakes. It's still not, totally. uh, my speed probably isn't like it is with a on-screen keyboard. But it doesn't feel foreign, even after just a week or two. And, and I think that's absolutely one of the things that was a takeaway for me. Because I, I didn't have to do the full review. So this was just my personal usage and kind of mm. coming to grips with um, revisiting this hardware keyboard. Uh, especially after the Priv, where this just feels so much better put together than the experience I had with my Priv. Um, but just that notion of this phone really does give off kind of a poor first impressions. If I give this phone to someone, like if I give this phone to my mom, um, my mom had a texting phone with a sideways QWERTY keyboard, Standing. and now she's she's on a Galaxy. And I know for a fact that this wouldn't feel right to her because she's gotten used to getting things done on her Galaxy. Mm -hmm. So that first time, if I were to only hand this phone to her and like let her play with it for a couple minutes, this would feel like garbage. <laughs> you know, like, who would want this? I don't want this. But if I were to take away her Galaxy and make her use it for a week, I think the, at the end of this week, she would probably look at her Galaxy in a completely different way in terms of the things that she really values about having a smartphone. You know, that's got to be but terrifying I, for TCL, though. How do you yeah. sell a phone to people when it's a good phone and you probably will like, I mean, certain users will like this phone eventually, but how do you yeah. get them over that hump? No, I see, and that's, and that's exactly it is, I, you know, this is a conversation where even our uh, us as reviewers, while we can dig in deep, while we can really examine, while we can share our experiences, there's just so much nuance that can't be conveyed on something like this because it's such a limited focus. You know, it, it's such a, a small sphere of individuals who are sharing their experiences with it. And the general consumer who might be interested in it has really, you know, very few resources or very few opportunities to play with it. And when they do, I think that initial... Yeah, the first impressions aren't with, going to be great. you got to stick with it. Exactly. And so that, that to me, I think, is, is ultimately one of the biggest concerns I have with this phone. Yeah. Is I think it's one of the most compelling devices of the year. I think this is one of the most interesting phones I'll be able to play with, to review, to counter review. I, I might do sort of a rebuttal video to some of the things that Jaime was talking about. Um, but that's because I get to have a conversation about a company which had a specific idea and market in mind and nailed the execution. That's why I love the V20. I don't think the V20 is a great all-rounder, but it's a content creation and multimedia monster. You know, so like 
they did they did nail exactly what they set out to do. It's just not maybe the widest audience that they could reach. And I think BlackBerry is in the same situation here. This isn't going to be sort of the solution you point to as being sort of the soft around the edges, friendly to everybody phone. But for the person who's interested in a certain quality of productivity, this phone absolutely nails it. And I think everyone can appreciate better battery life. But, you know, that's tricky because I find when people ask me for advice on what phone to get, I come back with, well, what's most important to you? And they'll say something like, I want a great camera or, you know, a really pretty screen. And although battery life is super important, I don't think a lot of people go shopping for a phone saying, I want something with really great battery life. And if they did, I don't know that the key one would necessarily come to mind for me as the phone to suggest. I mean, it, it, I, I mean, it, does, it, it will now, I, though, for me. It might, but for I think me, I would like if still consider battery, something more mass market. I would suggest, like, looking at flagships from, like, LG or Samsung, which among those has the great greatest battery life. And you'd have to, like, come out and say, well, I want a phone that has a keyboard. Do those still exist? Like, hey, funny you mention that. <laughs> they do, and they're not too shabby. You know, you know, I think that's really interesting, though, is is I don't have that story of 60 hours of use. I'm not just like it was on for 60 hours, but I was using mm -hmm. it for 60 hours with any other phone that I've reviewed. So I was really impressed with the Mate 9, you know, 5.9-inch screen, 4,000 milliamp hour battery. I think I can eke out two days, not two days and two nights, but two, I'm up and I go to bed, um, two days of use on that. Mm -hmm. I, I think now this is absolutely, with a bullet, one of the phones that I can point to, the key one, if someone were to say to me like, hey, you know what, like, I don't care if I can play games and I don't care if I can watch YouTube videos, I need something that can, that, that can last, immediately, you know, I have that, that reference point, 60 hours yeah. of active use that I don't have that number because I just take it for granted on a galaxy, you know, like, oh, it'll, it'll still be, I'll still have some juice left by the time I go to bed. Right. But, but I'll have to plug you, it in. A day anyway. is the best you're shooting for here. Exactly. And so now like I, I have this one talking point um, and, and I also have the talking point of the keyboard, but I, I think you're right. I don't think people go into buying a phone and considering like, oh, well, I want a phone that I know won't leave me stranded. But that's absolutely one of the first things they complain about. Yes, yes. After they buy a phone, their phone doesn't have good battery life. You know, I, I don't know if this is something worth complaining about. Is it an issue for you that there's no wireless charging support here? I've heard people no. say this is it's not something consumers want. This is just a way to sell accessories at the carrier stores. But it, it just no. would have put the bow on it for me, I think. And I can imagine no, this I, world where there are really, really nice, like themed BlackBerry charging pads that have the, you know, the fake leather on there and the logo stamped in them. It would look really cool. Totally. But you know. I, 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 I agree that it would be a nice perk of a feature, but it's also, it's what I consider to be a perk. You know, like having wireless charging on a Galaxy wouldn't have ever been a, a purchasing motivator. Mm. Ah. But I like that it's there, you know? But so while we're, I, I miss it when it's gone. While we're talking but... about perks that we miss, what about water resistance? I know it must have been that... a nightmare to do with a hardware keyboard, but this has become, everyone does this. And should yeah. you maybe be wary that this phone is less durable than its competition? Well, in I, I think, y yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yes, but I, I also feel like this is this is an opportunity for manufacturers to step up disclosure, to have conversations, you know, their 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 focus on this phone was sort of the rough and tumble durability aspect kind of ThinkPad style. Yeah. Of, no you know, one ever says this device, thing isn't waterproof. Around. You kind of have to listen long enough and like, wait, why is no one mentioning water? Oh, but I, but I think every phone should have a properly disclosed IP rating. So even if it should IP be like like a nutrition label on uh, on food, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And so so that would mean to me now I know what I'm in for as a consumer. If you know the Pixel is properly rated IP53, I know this thing is not rated to be completely submerged underwater. Mm -hmm. And I feel a company like BlackBerry should really be at the head of a conversation like that. You're telling me impact resistant glass and that it's a durable frame. It's it's ruggedly built. It's designed it's to good. take drops yeah. and, and to get banged up a little bit. But. Awesome. What if I spill my martini? Whoopsie doodle. <laughs>
Yeah. I just want to know, like, it, can I just kind of, you know, shake it off and like be okay? Yeah. Or is this like, I need to get this thing replaced and serviced immediately. And that you're, you're absolutely on point there. Like, I just need to know what I'm in for. And I feel that's a bigger deal than, than whether or not it really is truly like go swimming underwater with it kind of a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I would at least know what it is that I'm in for. But Stephen, um, uh, this has been a phenomenal conversation. I'm so glad we had you back to talk about this phone. Sort of uh, sum it up for me. Wrap it up. You've spent a week with this device. You're feeling pretty good. Oh, no. Some, I, I am feeling really great about this phone. I am already moved on to my next review, but I'm kind of like I'm having some withdrawal here. And this doesn't always happen for me where I just want to spend more time with this device. And I, I didn't even come fully around to embrace, like, I still struggle a little with the hardware keyboard. I'm not as fast as I'd like mm-hmm. to be, but I can finally see all the potential in this device. And there are really few phones. And I'm glad you had me on to talk about this one, because there's just few devices I've been as excited about as this one. And I think that that's what's going to make this this phone shine. You get people using this, they're going to start forming their own stories about the key one, what they used it for, and they're going to tell other people. And the word's going to get out about this guy. It might take a little while because, like you said, there's people need to unlearn with their expectations from other phones with hardware keyboards, from other Blackberries even. <laughs> right. And this Definitely. has its work cut out for it for success, but th- this is easily the most exciting Blackberry phone in years. And one of the, like you said, one of the, the most exciting phones of 2017 so far. Right on. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I would highly recommend uh, checking out the Pocket Now review of the BlackBerry Key One. And when you're done with that, if, if you, you have some, some extra time, time yeah. you should totally check out. No, seriously, I think Stephen, you did a phenomenal job in in covering this phone, especially given because uh, you know when we had Evan on. Uh, last week for the podcast, it, we we kind of ran into that same situation. Everyone's got the same embargo. Everyone has to kind of push the same talking points through the same mm-hmm. review process over the same period of time. Um, but your your review, I, I really appreciated the commentary that you brought to it. And I thought it was a really fun discussion for you guys to have over at Phone Arena. So everyone who's watching this or listening to this, definitely go check out the Phone Arena review of the BlackBerry Key One with our... Uh, our awesome Stephen Shank at the at the helm of this review, talking about productivity, durability, and all, all the fun stuff, stuff that comes yeah. with with this phone. Yeah, that, that means so much coming from you. Thanks for the kind words. <laughs> you're you're more than welcome. I feel like this is like this is the digital hug, like you know, back oh. mutual back patting. Because I, I loved working with you, man. This this was a this this was a, a fun way to revisit that. Absolutely, I can't wait to see you again. Uh-huh.